Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be the start of another reading vlog. I am going to be binging the Wallflower series. Um, I originally wanted to do this because I know Devil in Disguise, I believe, is coming out in July. Um, and I have not read any of the books before it. I've read Chasing Cassandra, but that is it. And I knew that I could read it as a standalone, but I really wanted to get the whole world. Now, I know that I am probably not going to be able to read all of the books that come before it by the time that book releases in July, especially because I have an arc of it and I need to read it in time. But I want to try, and I figured this might as well be a good time to start it as any other. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep putting off starting this series. So, um, I am going to be reading these books this month and obviously I'm starting with again the magic um but anyway I just wanted to go ahead and film my intro so you guys know what I'm doing but I'm excited to read these books I've heard such great things about this one especially so excited to get started on this series okay so I'm like four chapters into again the magic I just got to the part where we're gonna skip 12 years later but um it's good but so sad so they were like friends when they were younger he was a stable boy um and she, like for her family she lived in the house and they had grown up as friends and as they got older they developed feelings for each other and her dad found out that they had been kissing one day and was going to send this guy away and so she tells her dad that if he will send her send him to a decent place um she basically won't sleep with the guy because she hasn't slept with what's his name McKenna she hadn't slept with him yet and that's like the only thing that's I don't know keeping her dad happy I guess and so um because he knows that would ruin her for a future marriage so anyway, so she promises to not sleep with him if he will send McKenna to a good place. And so he does, but then she has to break his heart because she knows that's the only way that he won't come back is if he thinks she doesn't love him anymore. And if he does come back, her dad is going to destroy him. And so she has to break his heart. And in the process, it breaks her heart. Um, the past section ended with her like catching on fire, so I'm not really sure what's going to happen with that, but we're about to skip 12 years ahead. So anyway, if I'm sure all of you guys have read this book, but just wanted to update you. So far, so good. Good morning, you guys. Excuse my wet hair, but I am a little over halfway through Again the Magic. I am loving her sister. Is it Livia? Whatever her sister's name is. I am loving that relationship with her and Mr. Shaw. Um, almost more than I'm enjoying the main couple. So, McKenna wanted revenge, whatever. and But every time they start to get physical, his feelings take over. And it's like the revenge isn't happening. I'm not sure what his idea of revenge was. Um, but they did just sleep together. And he found out that she was a virgin and is upset by that so I don't know if now he feels sorry and he's not gonna seek revenge I don't know what the revenge was I don't I don't know oh you all right Kimber so I mean I'm not disliking this book by any means but I am wanting more of her sister's relationship and her sister's romance than I am hers so anyway I just sat down this morning and cuddling with the dogs. Bella Boo, Kimberly. <laughs> and we're gonna read some more. It's raining outside. Okay, so I just finished Again the Magic and I'm giving it four stars. I really enjoyed it. I got frustrated when she lied to him the second time. Like if you were in love with him, just tell him. Um. So that was really frustrating. I did, however, love everything that happened after that, like the very ending, like how her brother came and talked to her and was like, you know, that wouldn't affect, if I loved someone like that wouldn't affect my feelings for them, her insecurity. And so she's like, okay, let's go find him. And so 
like I, I liked the all of that, the ending, and I loved Livia's relationship with Shaw. I wanted more of that. Um, but I mean, overall, it was a decent read. It was a four star read. I, um, I don't know. I, I felt like I needed more romance in the present. We got the romance in the past. And we got the physical attraction in the present, but like really the only feelings were either physical or like stuff they were remembering from the past. I needed more to be happening now. And I just felt like that was kind of lacking. So anyway, I did really enjoy this. I'm excited to continue on in the series, um, but I'm only giving it four stars. I know everyone else like loves this book, but it was a good read and yeah, anyway, I will let you guys know when I pick up the next book. Hey guys, so I have been listening to Secrets of a Summer Night while I do chores around the house and I'm almost halfway through it, not quite. It doesn't look as much there, but the audio is telling me I'm at like 47%. Anyway, I am really liking this. I like it. Kimber, what you doing? What you doing? <gasps> So sitting here with the dogs, <laughs> again, summer is nice. Um, anyway, I am liking this more than, again, the magic. So Annabelle has formed a like friendship with three other girls, and they call themselves the Wallflowers, and they are working on plans to find a husband. Annabelle's family is struggling with money and so she really needs a husband but two of the girls in their group are from America and they have a lot of money and so they're like her fairy godmother and they gave her gowns and stuff um <clears throat> but anyway so in the prologue we see Simon Hunt kiss Annabelle in like a dark theater and she doesn't push him away but she's like I can't believe he did that. So now years later, I think it's like three years later, um, she still needs a husband, but is not interested in him at all. Like, and she thinks that he wants her as his mistress and that's it. Um, because he doesn't want to marry. So anyway, she is, they're at this party thrown by, I think the Earl and she is trying to get the attention of another wealthy man there but Simon Hunt keeps showing up everywhere she is. And he and the Earl came upon the girls playing a game in their underwear. Um, because you can't run in skirts. It was basically like baseball. I can't remember what they called it. But um, they can't run in skirts. So they were running in their underwear. And they found them. And so she talks to Simon and is like, hey, Howard, like, please don't tell anyone about this you can kiss me as long as you will keep this quiet. And so that hasn't happened yet. Now she's feeling sick. And so he's kind of just showed up and I guess is going to take care of her. But anyway, I'm loving this so much. And I really like Simon, even though he's kind of, he was a little creepy at first, how he's just always there. But like, I feel like he really has a good heart and he really, really cares for her. So I'm excited to see what happens. So anyway, I'm going to keep reading and I'll update you guys later. <laughs> Please excuse my appearance. I got back from walking the dog, so I'm all flushed, and then I took a shower. Um, but I'm about to start another book, and I wanted to update you guys before I forgot. So I did finish this on my walk. I was listening to the audiobook. I'm going to give it four stars. So they got married, and there was still like 100 pages left. And sometimes I don't mind that, but in this book, it felt like it was dragging. Like, we didn't really need all of that extra stuff. I will say I appreciated the very, very end but like we didn't need a hundred more pages after they were married. I really, really liked Simon. Annabelle was okay. She worried a lot about the different classes and even once she married Simon and she loved Simon, she was still sad she wasn't getting to go to like the higher class parties. I don't know. I didn't really love her as much as I thought I was going to. 
So anyway, I'm giving this four stars. I am excited to continue on in the series and read about the other wallflowers. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do, but just wanted to update you guys real quick. Hey y'all, I promise I do actually like get up off of this couch <laughs> during the day. This is just my reading spot. And so it's where I update you. Usually, or lately, I guess, since I started my channel, my husband has been working from home and I don't film in front of him. So I would always go into like my other room to film updates. But now he's back at work and I want summer break. So I get to just sit on the couch and update you guys. Sorry, the dog's walking around. Anyway, I'm like 100 pages into It Happened One Autumn. I'm loving this book. So Lillian, um, her dad is like a soap maker, whatever, back in New York. And so she's really good about picking, really good at picking out scents. And so at the beginning of the book, we see her go to a place that like makes perfume and she asks him to make her like this formula that she created to make it into a perfume. And he has this like magic, he calls it magic, um, scent that he's going to put into it. And she agrees because she likes the scent, whatever. Well, then later in the gardens, she's with, with Westcliff. They're having to hide from her dad. And so they are like forced really close together. And he smells this perfume on her and like can't help himself and ends up kissing her. And so now she's convinced that it's just the perfume. So she makes all the wallflowers wear it for dinner at one night and to see if it affects him at all. And it doesn't. So um, anyway, that's pretty much where I met. But I'm really into this so far and I'm excited to see where it goes. Okay, so I have just over 100 pages left and it happened one autumn. And I don't know how I'm feeling about this book. I was loving it. So her and Marcus continue to be attracted to each other. And Sebastian St. Vincent comes into the book. I didn't realize this was the book that he is first in. Um, so anyway, that's been fun because I know everyone loves him. Not in this book, but like in the book he's the hero of. So he has kind of developed a little bit of a friendship with Lillian, but it's more just along the lines of he needs to marry for money and she has the money and he doesn't care that she doesn't have a title. So he swoops in and now tells her that he wants to court her. Obviously, Marcus is not fond of that. Westcliff, is that his, his name, um, is not fond of that and tries to tell her to stay away from him, which makes her more upset. He ends up then sleeping with Lillian while she is very drunk. And that's kind of where I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this. She kind of knew what she was doing. She remembers it when she wakes up. But like, she probably wouldn't have done that had she been sober. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. He didn't force her into it, but she was drunk. I don't know. Anyway, so now he's like, well, we have to marry. But she doesn't want to marry. She's like, can we just pretend it never happened and lie to everyone? Um, so anyway, I don't know where that's going to go. Because, like, she likes him. So I don't know why she doesn't want to marry him. Especially now that she's ruined by him. So anyway, we'll see. Okay, I finished It Happened One Autumn. And I'm giving it four stars. I liked this more than the first two. I was going to give it like four and a half, but I'm just not on board with the fact that he slept with her while she was drunk. So for that reason, I bumped it down half a star, which gave it four stars. So you really do see Sebastian being the villain in this book. I know people have said that, but as I was reading, I was like, I mean a little bit, but not really. It happens at the end. Um, That's where all the action happens. That was probably the most exciting part of the book. Um... I really enjoyed the beginning and I really enjoyed the end. The middle was a little slow for me. Um, like I fully planned on and could have finished this book yesterday, but I just wasn't interested in continuing to pick it up because um, that middle part just was quite slow. So anyway, I am giving it four stars. I really liked it a lot, but I'm really excited for the next book. And yeah, so I'll start that in a little bit and I'll let you guys know how it's going. Okay, so I'm like 80 pages into Devil in Winter and I'm not sure how I'm feeling about it. 
So Evie is the super shy wallflower who stutters when she's not around someone that she knows really well and is just overall quiet. And she, well, she, okay, so she does not have a great home life. Her dad is really sick. Her mom passed away in childbirth, I believe. Um, and so she's been living with her mom's family, like her aunt and stuff, and they're terrible to her. And she was supposed to marry one of her cousins who was also awful. And so she runs away to St. Vincent and says, hey, like my dad's about to die and I'm going to inherit his fortune. You can have the money if you will marry me and keep me safe from my family. Because part of the reason her family wanted her to marry her cousin was so they could keep the money and control it. So she's like, as long as I get a trust and you protect me from my family, whatever, then you can have the money. So um, they travel to Scotland and get married and now they're on their way back. But like as much of a villain as St. Saint, Saint Vincent is, you see like small pieces of him that really is starting to care for her already. And so that's been super sweet. But anyway, I, yeah, like I'm liking it. I just, I need to see more of the like sweet side of him, which I'm sure is coming. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to go check on dinner in the crock pot and then maybe walk to the mailbox. And I don't really know, but I'll update you guys later. Hello, so I am about halfway through Devil in Winter and it's really good so far. So I will say this one has a lot more suspense than the other books in the series have. Um, and I don't always love that in any books, but especially in my historical romances because it's fairly common in historicals. But I really am enjoying it in this one. Um, I feel like it's adding a lot to the plot and also that's really like the main time where we're getting to see that Sebastian cares about Evie um, is like when she is kidnapped and stuff like that. And so the way he reacts um, is really where we're getting to see how he cares about her. But so Sebastian obviously is like a super rake, right? Like he sleeps around and he only ever sleeps with women once because he gets bored like with each woman once. Well, he he and Evie consummated their marriage, obviously, because they didn't want it to be able to be annulled. And now he still wants her. And she's like, I don't, I don't trust you. Like, I don't trust that you can be faithful to me. And so he is going to be, he's taken a vow of celibacy for three months. And if he can prove to her that he will not sleep with anyone for three months, then she <laughs> says, you can have me for the rest of your life, um, willingly. So anyway, I just like how much he still wants her, even though he thought he wouldn't. And I don't know, I'm just really enjoying it a lot and I'm gonna keep reading. Sorry, my appearance, it's fine. I've been helping my husband in the garage with some woodworking stuff and then I took a shower and washed my body off because I was all sweaty, but you don't need to know that. <laughs> anyway, I did finish Devil in Winter. I am giving it five stars. I really, really loved this book. I liked it obviously the most out of all of the wallflowers so far. I loved how even when Sebastian was fighting his feelings for her and saying that he was indifferent to her, like his actions were showing otherwise. And there's a sweet caretaking scene. All around, I just really enjoyed this book. Um, like I said, I feel like the suspense really added to the plot. And there wasn't really ever a time where we were kept in suspense for multiple chapters, which I appreciated. It was always resolved fairly quickly which is nice because I wasn't reading this to read a romantic suspense. Um, so I did really, really like that. Um, oh, also we get to see Cam Rohan, which I know is another super popular Lisa Claypest hero that I hear about a lot. 
So, and his book is next, I'm pretty sure. So that is fun. He works in the club that Evie's dad owns that Sebastian is now running. But overall, I just really loved this book a lot. I can see now why it is so popular and I'm excited to read the next and last book in the series. Okay, so apparently Cam Rohan is not the hero in the fourth book. The person who owned uh, Devil in Winter before me had written all in it and had written that book four was Cam Rohan. So that's my fault for just assuming that they were right. But I know that he is a popular Lisa Claypo's hero and I hear his name. So now I'm excited to read his story, which I think is in the Hathaway series. I could be wrong again. But anyway, but yeah, the person that wrote in this book underlined like weird things. Like in the caretaking scene, she underlined or he, I don't know, underlined only what they were using like for medicine. And then um, there was another scene where she underlined like what they were eating. Nothing like, I don't know, it was interesting. Anyway, so that's totally my fault for assuming that this person was correct in writing that book four was Cam Rohan. It is not. It is Matthew somebody. So anyway, I am still excited to read book four and I will update you guys when I start that in a little bit. Oh... <sighs> Good morning. It was a rough night or rough morning, I guess you could say. I woke up at 3.30, never went back to sleep, just paid a ridiculous amount of money to get coffee delivered and it's not even what I ordered, but that's okay. I'm going to drink it anyway. I'm on the struggle bus this morning, which is why I have not gotten ready yet. But anyway... I wanted to update you guys because I'm just over 200 pages into Scandal in Spring. So this is Daisy's story and Mr. Bowman, Daisy's dad, is kind of tired of the fact that she just wants to read all the time and hasn't found a husband. Sorry if you can hear my dog moving around. Um, he says she has until the end of May, which is about two months, to find a husband or she's going to marry Matthew Swift, who is one of his employees who he wants to eventually take over the company. Um, well, Matthew is American because Daisy, like the Bowmans, are from America, but he comes over to England for Westcliff. Um, Lillian's husband, so Daisy's brother in law, is throwing some kind of hunting party thing. I don't know. So anyway, he's there for that. And he runs into Daisy very quickly. And he had no idea about Mr. Bowman's plan to marry them off. Um, and he says that he cannot marry her, but he has been in love with her forever. So we're still not sure even 200 pages in why he cannot marry her. Um, but yeah, but we have seen them it started out kind of hate to love on her side. Like I said, he's been in love with her forever, but she remembered him as like a not great guy, really awkward guy. Um, and she, as soon as she sees him is like, oh, you've changed. But there's still kind of like a lot of disagreements. They have a really aggressive um, game of lawn bowling, but like through that all, they're developing like a friendship and a respect for each other. And she has now started to fall for him, but he won't marry her. So anyway, that's where I met. So far, it's really, really good. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm going to just sit here and chill and try not to fall asleep and see if I can get some more reading done. And then I will update you guys when I'm done with it. Hey, y'all. So I finished Scandal in Spring this morning and I ended up giving it four stars. Same kind of story as the rest of them. I really liked it. In sections, I felt like it went a little slow. Um, there was a lot of action or suspense towards the end. The only one of them in the series that had the suspense action-y plot woven throughout was Devil in Winter, and I really appreciated the way that was written. These other ones, while it was fine and we knew that it was coming, especially in this one, because um, it's kind of hinted at, I don't know, I just feel like that's such a like typical thing in a historical is to have the romance and then the last like 60 pages Something goes wrong, and it's usually some kind of suspenseful thing goes wrong. It's not just a conflict in the relationship, and then it's resolved, and then everything's okay. And while sometimes that works for me, sometimes it doesn't, and I didn't dislike it in this series, but I feel like this series is a solid four-star for me, other than obviously Devil in Winter. I did, like I said, really enjoy that one more. So I have, however, picked up A Wallflower Christmas, I knew that I would never come back to this if I didn't just go ahead and read it for this vlog. I'm only two chapters in, 
but this is Rafe Bowman. Um, so he is the brother of Lillian and Daisy, and he has come to England for Christmas. And he is supposed to marry Natalie, I believe. But I think he's going to end up with Hannah. So Hannah is Natalie's cousin, and the Wallflowers invite her over to get to know things about Natalie so that maybe their brother will know how to um, court her better, whatever. And... But anyway, he is very attracted to Hannah right off the bat. And so I think maybe they're going to have a romance. She's not into him at all. She's like, he's such an American, whatever. But anyway, like I said, I'm not very far into it. But that's that's how that's going. So anyway, I don't know that I will be able to finish this tonight. We're going to go to dinner with my in-laws for my mother-in-law's birthday. But if not, I will finish it for sure tomorrow. It's only 200 pages. So anyway, I'll update you guys when I'm done with it. Okay, so I finished A Wallflower Christmas, and I'm only going to give this one three stars. I really liked the romance in it, but we didn't get very much of it. This was like really more of a like look and see where the wallflowers are now, and then there was a romance is kind of like the side plot. And while obviously I enjoyed the wallflower series, so I liked getting to see them again, there wasn't a whole lot happening in that part of the book. And so I just kept finding myself wanting to go back to the romance. So it was enjoyable, but I'm giving it three stars. Um, I had to kind of really push myself through this, even though it's a very short book. But anyway, I have now read the Wallflower series. I am excited to now move on to, I think the Hathaways are next. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.